how does it feel to be in space? Well, you know, it's, it's an experience that's quite unlike anything that you can really experience on Earth. You're floating, everything you're dealing with is floating, and you, you have to figure out, um, you know, you have to be very methodical and figure out <laughs> how you can get things done well in that environment. And then the second thing, of course, is the views of Earth from space. So cool. Well, for Women's History Month, we share the story of Dr. Ellen Ochoa, the first Latina astronaut to go to space. Vidi Huerta spoke to Dr. Ochoa about her day soaring through space, working at NASA, and advocating for science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So Tiffany joins us live from the Whitty Museum's Space Exploration Exhibit with the story. Good morning, Tiffany. Worn in space by astronaut Dr. Ellen Ochoa, and you yourself can come here to the museum and check it out this month. Ochoa shares with me her passion for not only space, STEM, and education. It's an honor to meet you, Dr. Ochoa. To celebrate um, Women's History Month, we spent some time getting to know veteran astronaut Dr. Ellen Ochoa. If you can describe that day when you flew aboard that space shuttle Discovery 1993, tell me about that moment, how it was for you. Well, uh, you know, it was something I'd been uh, dreaming about for a while. So it was, it was definitely exciting for the day to come. Ochoa became the first Latina astronaut in space when she flew aboard Space Shuttle Discovery. Our primary objective on that flight was studying the Earth's atmosphere and particularly the problem of ozone hole and ozone depletion. Ochoa even took time out of her busy day in space to play the flute. You took music to space. One of the things we were doing was shooting um, a video, um, part of a liftoff to learning series that NASA had at that time, kind of comparing a day in space with um, a day they might be familiar with um, on Earth. And so we did talk a little bit about hobbies. Ochoa went on to participate in three more missions. In addition to supporting NASA's human spaceflight goals, I did have this opportunity now that really opened up. Um, to be able to do outreach, to reach out to lots of different kinds of audiences. But of course, a lot of them were focused on um, people or students who are not well represented in STEM, whether that's women or people of Hispanic um, background or other groups who are underrepresented in STEM. Talk to us a little bit about your Hispanic background. My dad's parents were Mexican. And um, after they had gotten married and started a family, uh, that's when they emigrated to the United States. It's a background where um, I think um, at the time my dad and his older brother sisters were growing up, um, it certainly not only wasn't encouraged to speak Spanish, but was actually pretty discouraged. And certainly they faced um, uh, other obstacles as well. Uh, so it's nice to be able to play a role now, um, especially with students out there who are also of Hispanic background to show, you know, the, the sky's the limit or maybe the sky's not the limit, right, <laughs> because of space. In 2013, Ochoa became the 11th director of NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. She was the second female and first Latina to assume the position. What message do you have for other women or young girls? I think it's important to set high goals for yourself and not to limit them based on what you might hear from people, again, who don't know you, who don't know what kind of qualities you have, a willingness to ask questions and to learn. You know, that that is what is important. And she has a big passion for that education and STEM. She even wrote a bilingual children's book, We Are All Scientists. That's my daughter right there. <laughs> um, so this book is amazing. It talks about just curiosity, you know, things like dirt ants, everything astronomers. And then even back here, I want to show this. This is for Justin. There's meteorologists forecast the weather and understand the storms so anything is possible when you're you're little and children can read this book in english and in spanish and we are all scientists mark steph tiffany why did she decide to study science and engineering well mark this is not something she always thought about she loved music she played the flute she played the flute in high school and then she went on to study more of that, but she was very interested in math. So when she went to college, she studied that even more, and that's how it all started.
And so I'm sure a lot of kiddos out there, well, actually, I want to know, what did she eat in space? <laughs> <laughs> What's really cool here at the Witty Museum, they have examples of different items that astronauts eat in space. Take a look. A lot of the freeze-dried foods here, you see we have some beef in these little pockets here. We have chicken with corn. But one thing that I didn't know was the tortillas. She said she really enjoyed eating these tortillas, and there's a reason behind this. She says when you eat bread, in space, the crumbs can be dangerous. They're, they can go not only everywhere, they can go in your eyes or the equipment. So that's why they stay away from that. And she loved eating like burritos. She loved eating scrambled eggs with tortillas. And who doesn't love that here on Earth? <laughs> that's true. Hey, and Tiffany, you graciously let me talk to Mrs. Ocho, which was awesome. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but I want to ask, do you think she's going to be watching the total solar eclipse? She's actually traveling to Austin to stay with a friend there, so she will be watching. And I did bring you and Mia to come join and ask some questions. So I'm going to put together a story later this week, and we're going to hear more of your interaction with her, Justin. Awesome. And uh, full disclosure, because I was so excited to talk to her, <laughs> I missed my hit at noon because I was in there talking to her. It was That's hideous. okay. It was That's just, okay. There wasn't a lot of weather going on, so it was yeah. okay. I made up for it. Well, it, it, I was it, excited. The excitement <laughs> makes <Yes>. total sense. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. We look forward to that.